I'd like to tell you a story about a topic that's near and dear to my heart, and that topic is data. Now, I know what you're thinking. Uh, any story about data is going to have to be mostly about technology, right? And jam-packed with formulas and probably uh, contain a lot of scholarly bullet points. Um, well, I promise you we're not going to do any of that here. Because it turns out this story is about you as much as anything else. And I mean that. Whether you're on the business side of the house or work in IT, or maybe you float somewhere in between, I promise this is relevant. Uh, it also doesn't matter what level of the org chart uh, you work at, and it, you do not require some sort of like PhD in math uh, in order to follow along or for this to be valuable for you. So, you know, of course, we're going to be talking about how we use data, uh, how we can use data to bring in money, both for ourselves and for our organizations. And we're going to talk about that, uh, doing that without spending large amounts of money or even large amounts of, of time. But we're also going to talk about something else, something you might not expect. And that thing is happiness. Yeah, happiness in a story about data. But it's true. A better relationship with data will not just improve your business and your career, but actually make you happier in the process and the people around you. As Dr. Seuss once said, 98 and three quarter percent guaranteed. And I actually have the empirical evidence to back that up. Like all good adventure stories, this one has a map at the front of it. And each one of these stops that we're going to take on this journey is, uh, is relatively brief, but important. And uh, I'm not going to ruin it by naming all of these stops up front. If you want to cheat, you can pause the video and look at, look at the, the list in the descriptions. Uh, but let's just go straight into the, the very first part, the very first stop, which is about how I heard this story. I like to say that I heard this story because I definitely didn't write it. Really, the, the world wrote this story, and my job is really just to relay it now on to you. But I do think that it's helpful to understand uh, how I came to hear this story in the first place, because that'll help you understand it and, and trust it better. So just starting briefly, uh, in college, I studied computer science, which, you know, obviously is about writing programs, writing software. But fundamentally, at a, at a deeper level, it's really about the art of using machines to turn data into information. Then after college, after I, I spent that time in engineering and all that stuff, uh, then I, I spent my next 14 years toiling in the fires of Mount Redmond, which you probably know better as Microsoft. And while at Microsoft, I worked on a bunch of things, uh, primarily worked on Excel. Uh, I worked on some other things that you probably never heard of, uh, but I did work on some other things that you have, such as I spent a little time working on the, the Bing search engine, which is definitely about data. And then the last thing I did at Microsoft was this thing called Power Pivot. So the common thread, of course, in all of this is, guess what? Data. Uh, four years studying the theory of data in school, and then another 14 years using those theories to, to produce tools, uh, tools for working with data. So that's, you know, all told, 18 years spent uh, up to my eyeballs working on data. Uh, but if things had continued that way, I probably never would have heard the story that I'm, that I'm telling you today. You know, as it happened, fate intervened, and a series of uh, events outside of work forced me to consider relocating, and I did. So I left Mount Redmond and moved to the heartland. I couldn't do my old job from that far away. I needed a new job. Well, that power pivot thing that I'd been working on back at Microsoft, it sure seemed promising. So I thought I'd start there. And uh, really, you know, ever since then, I think it's fair to say that I've been a, a free range nerd uh, outside the Microsoft perimeter. Uh, it might be a little bit more flattering to think of myself as a, a freelance data ninja. But uh, that job has afforded me an amazing series of opportunities that I never would have had back at Microsoft. And primarily, that's that I get to spend every single day helping people work with their data. And now, at first, this was primarily helping people uh, in my new backyard. But pretty soon, I also had some amazing people I was working with out west. Uh, 
Ironically, some people I was helping back in Microsoft's backyard. Uh, and it turns out that, of course, everyone has data. So I started working with people all over the country. And you know, as my website's popularity grew, I started working with people really all over the world. And I found that helping people with their data is pretty addictive. Uh, yeah, and there's certainly a nerd component of that addiction. But the happy, again, the happy was the striking part. So more on that later. At this point, I think it's fair to say that I've had experience with all phases of sort of the, the data lifecycle, theory, tools, and then the actual application uh, of those tools to work with data. But it's that last part, the application uh, of it, that has really put the exclamation point uh, on all of this for me. And in the process, I've learned something pretty amazing about Power Pivot. Now, although it's probably more fair to say that it's not something about Power Pivot really, it's, it, Power Pivot's really just been the lens uh, that I've happened to use uh, to, to, to see this story. Because um, really this is about the people uh, that I've been working with over the years. And, and the, the things that happen, the things that change uh, about them and the ma magical things that they do uh, when they're working with Power Pivot. But I absolutely want to stress that Power Pivot is not the star of our story. Uh, in fact, we're not even really going to use the words Power Pivot uh, too much at all, really, once we get out of this introduction. So, and, and to really emphasize this, I want to also make it particularly super clear that Microsoft is not paying me to say nice things about Power Pivot. They're not paying me at all anymore. Uh, and you know, don't get me wrong. We'd we'd love that here at Power Pivot Pro. We we would we would love it if they were they were paying us to say nice things. We do amazing things with that money, but that's not what's happening. Uh, and furthermore, you might suspect that if you hear me saying some nice things from time to time about Power Pivot, you might suspect, hey, well, that's just because you worked on it, Rob. Uh, and actually, the opposite is true. Uh, that if you when you hear me say nice things about Power Pivot, it's actually in spite of the fact. Uh, that I worked on. And that might be surprising to hear, but you need to understand sort of what it was like for me to be a software engineer to, to, to get that. So uh, every time we worked on something new at Microsoft, uh, most of us on the team, but me especially, I always had really high expectations about how much that software was going to change the world. I was really stoked about it uh, you know, every time, really. And uh, you know, the reality when, when we got done with it and it, and it went out, uh, was always a bit, um, you know, a little bit disappointing relative, or sometimes a lot disappointing relative to those expectations. Now, it's not because the things that we built were bad; uh, they actually were quite good. It's just more that my real my expectations were not terribly realistic. Uh, and you know, it's important to be really optimistic going into these things, and you know, get really excited and jazzed up. So I think that serves its purpose, um, but it does lead to sort of a, an emotional crash of of sorts. Plus, uh, in order to be to, to build good software, you have to spend you know two plus years of your life focused 100% every single day on all the things that are wrong with that software because you're you're trying to improve it, trying to make it better, and you know, that gives you kind of a distorted view uh, of of the product's worth over time. It, it it does get to you after a while. Now imagine doing this this cycle over and over again for 14 years. This you know, high expectations and then the, the, the crash of reality uh, over and over again. So when I went out into the wild and started hearing, uh, hearing some surprising things that you know, maybe this was working, working really well, maybe even better than we expected, uh, I didn't let myself hear it. All that uh, acclamation from back in the day, uh, yeah, I just, I was filtering it out. And I had to hear it a lot. Uh, I had to hear it a lot of times, um, and not just good things. I was hearing the same sorts of stories uh, over and over again. Uh, and that's when I, I finally sort of took down my, my shield and, and allowed myself uh, to hear what the world was telling me. Well, I've gotten it through my thick skull now, and uh, as they say in Vegas, I'm all in at this point. So betting my future, and we're betting the future of our company, on this data revolution that we've been witnessing. Uh, and so very much we're still doing, I'm still doing uh, the thing that started it all, which is helping people 
turn their data into actionable information. That's incredibly gratifying. And it's not just me anymore either. We've been uh, adding team, adding, adding to the team to help more people uh, as time goes on. Now at the strategic level, uh, we've also found it very gratifying to help people sort of get the most out of all of this at a cultural and, um, and base infrastructure sort of level as well. Uh, so that's been, that's been rewarding. Um, growing up, I always kind of wanted to be a teacher and this is, this has given me the opportunity to be one. So, uh, I've been really grateful, uh, for that. Uh, I never expected to write books, but there you have it. I've, uh, written two of them, which is two more than, um, two more than I ever expected and one more than I ever expected to write after I wrote the first one. Uh, and similarly, I never expected to spend six months, uh, sort of like in a video production mode, uh, building online training, but all of this just seems important, uh, in a way that nothing in my career has, has ever really seemed, uh, important before. So, uh, I hope you'll stick with us as this story unfolds. Uh, and I hope that over time, uh, as, as it unfolds, you'll see, uh, why, uh, I think all of this is important. So, um, check back with us for the, for the next installment.